Hello there, Ivan. All right, let's go. So, the issue of whether it is mandatory for children to acquire computer education in schools or not has grown in importance in recent years. Good. Strongly believe that it is necessary for young adults, good synonyms, to receive essential computer edu training and skills. Good. This essay will critically discuss the reasons using examples from the US and computer courses to demonstrate points and support arguments. Genius. Well done that one. Whoops, Daisy. Where are we? Okay. By attending computer classes, children are able to learn computer skills, or we could just say essential skills, just to avoid repetition, such as Microsoft Office, basic web design, programming, network, security, etc. And these skills can be regarded as impossible missions for them to acquire without the appropriate channels and resources. I don't like missions. Um, I would have said something. Um, I mean, the, the idea behind the sentence is good, but the, the way it's presented is, isn't. Okay, so we could have just said, um, without strict instruction, without strict dedicated instruction, it would be impossible to acquire these skills. Uh, well, it would be practically impossible to, to, to acquire these skills. Drawing on examples, drawing on examples from the US, children that are equipped with advanced software abilities or skills are proven to excel in their studies, hence it is critical for schools to have computer science as a compulsory subject. That would have been fine. Another that is fine, sorry. Another factor to be considered um, in favour of mandatory computer education is that these skills being taught in schools are relatively expensive. Okay. Okay, sorry, sorry, no, it's not in favour then, is it? Another factor to be considered uh, for having mandatory computer education is that these computer skills being taught in schools are relatively expensive. The computer skills are expensive? That's what it seems like. That I know you wanted to say the education. Okay? So we could have said, uh, is that uh, the machinery, hardware, and insurance for the schools is relatively expensive. For example, basic programming TFE course costs roughly $7,000. In other words, without the adequate financial resources, it is hard for children to learn them. Um, uh, it's hard to learn them um, without daily exposure to the technology. Thus, computer education in schools not only provides them with essential computer skills, but also reduces parents' financial pressures. Ah, okay, okay, so we just have to slightly adjust the um, introduction there to reflect that it's expensive for the parents as well, and not put the emphasis on the students, on the on the school, sorry. To summarise, it is imperative and indispensable, very good vocabulary for children to have information technology uh, training. Okay, because we've used computer insane amount of times. We could have used PC as well. Um, in schools, as they will be able to, or computer science as well, as they will be able to acquire the required skills. Okay, or necessary. Um, with these skills, they will be ready to meet the demands of tomorrow's high tech society. Um, yeah, or we could have even mentioned something about it being more equitable or a fairer society if all children have access to the computer courses regardless of their parents parents economic status something like that okay just to touch on what you said before all right okay then let's go so the line graph above shows the total special trade zone member income us billion for a period of 10 years and the bar chart above okay and the bar chart illustrates the makeup of nine different countries for the global market share of exports in 2000. Good. It is clear that there was an overall upward trend for the total mem member income for the special trade zone from the period 97 to 99. Good. 97. 
In 1990, the total member income was worth approximately $123,000, and it reached its peak in 97 at roughly, or roughly at, yeah, 178000 However, the total member income figures remain fairly stagnant for the last three years, okay, or for the remaining three years. If you say for the last, oh, what is wrong with this? Alright, here we go. Okay, if we say for the last three years, it means like from now since 2011. We don't want to say that. So, main for the, or we could just make it clear and say fairly stagnant for the last three years um, of the period. Yeah. There were nine different countries, namely Benzland. Okay, we could just say something like, uh, nine different countries contributed to the global share of exports in 2000 we don't have to list every single one of them we can see that Benzland, Jamesland, and Anderland were the three main players genius as they were as they accounted for almost one third of the global market share in exports good in contrast Joel and Peter were the minority players in the same exports in the in the with the minority players in the share of exports and only uh, reached around 3% of total exports. Okay. All right, then. Good work there, Yvonne. Let's see. Um, how could we improve this? So, in contrast, Joel and Peterland were the minority players. We've already used players, so we could have said um, had with the... Um, uh, let's see. So we've got majority, we've got minority. In contrast, Joel and Peter Lem um, represented only 3% of total exports, um, comma, extremely small portions or extremely small amounts, um, especially considering or considering uh, the other countries. Okay. Well, these are amongst the smallest of all nine countries. Okay. And we could have even said something like, um, I don't know, Darren Land, Herbert Land, are with the uh, with the middle countries, which had ten times or three times the amount of Peter Land and Joe Land. Okay, don't have the graph in front of me, but I'm just saying there's a there's some other points we could have included and some other structures. All right, very good work there, Yvonne. Let's keep going. You're doing good, and uh, sorry for that little bit. That little hiccup beforehand. 